Welcome to the Accounting Play Podcast, to know your numbers and to know your business. So today, wasting no time, we have our sloppy accounting edition on YouTube, on the podcast. Take a look. You need books fast. In 10 minutes, we're going to tell you how at GillinghamCPA.com, my firm, and AccountingPlay.com slash services hooks people up as far as the process needed to get this not one-stop shop thing fixed. Yeah, sure, it's easy if you have the budget for $300 a month for someone to do your books, reconcile everything, and give you advice. That's great. But let's talk about the real deal when you're at the table with your CPA or at the table with TurboTax trying to figure out your stuff and you need books now, let's talk about how we do that. We will lay out options from sloppy to choppy to a hoppy result. These are the techniques employed at CPA firms from the streets as well as the proper methodologies that are closer to generally accepted principles, which is double entry accounting. But we are on the get stuff done mentality right now. If you need more, you know where to go. Accountingplay.com, not legal nor tax advice. Please get a professional, stop being cheap. You know the one. So what, maybe you quit your job, maybe you started consulting. I get the phone call at my office ring ring gillingham cpa etc i have a new business the first thing we like to ask outside of do you have a budget to pay a cpa is that hey do you have books and records because if you're running a big business for 12 months with no accounting that's a quite a big thing to come together now Like I said, if you have a great budget every single month, someone's helping you out, you have real-time numbers to actually make decisions in your business, such as here is my best client, here is where I'm actually wasting more time, you can factor that into your own system. But now you just need books and you need it now. So let's talk about some of the different methodologies. Number one, estimate and pray with guidance from a professional. This is what I witnessed in my early career at a firm that was a little bit more rapid with the early entrepreneurs because ultimately they don't have the money, they can't afford it, so we need answers fast as someone who's going to be filing their taxes. How does that work? Well, there is a list of common expenses. You can email me. I'm happy to provide that to you. And basically, that advisor is going through with you how much money do you make and the person's like i don't know and you're like excuse me uh you make a thousand dollars a month two thousand a month are you are you able to support yourself this is the foundation of what is going on if someone has supported themselves an entire year and not taken on any debt you can actually discuss with the person and try and get an idea of hey how much money did you make this year? For example, I'll say, how much is your rent? A thousand bucks a month. How much is your groceries? Another thousand. Did you go into debt? Did you borrow money? No, no. Do you like to have fun? That's another thousand dollars a month. Did you do anything else? Did you have anything that we don't know about? And I'm like, look, dude, minimum, you made $36,000 a year. $3,000 a month times 12. So now you're estimating revenue, which the IRS has some guidance as what you can estimate and what you cannot. But the old methodology is be practical with it. How much is your business cell phone? Okay, it's $85 a month. Great. Is it 100% business, 75% business? All right, dial that in. Maybe some home office guidance, those painting with the big picture estimate. And ultimately, you sort of snap together what is a profit and loss, a compliant tax return, Now, the person might not have everything supported, but at least they have a tax return. They know how much they owe. They know if this business is worthwhile. So that is number one, estimate and pray with guidance. Number dos, the CSV and compile. 
using Excel, using data from what you have. This could also be the new school way instead of receipts. It used to be like, oh, bring your receipts in and we're gonna add that up and we're only gonna deduct that. It doesn't work that way anymore. You need to go to your bank and get the CSVs, that is the Excel files as well as the PDFs, all of the backup from the bank because when problems happen, and I'll tell you, and when they happen, they happen two years down the line. So you're like, oh great, we're filed, we're doing well, it's a year and a half, those receipts are in the trash, your home office is toast because you live in a new place or you bought a mansion and all this good stuff. You don't have the backup. So you need that backup of the bank statements. Forget about the all cash and estimate thing. No matter what, even if you estimate it, you wanna pull all that down as a record. And any receipts you have, you wanna just save them for a few years. Go and see what the exact methodology is, but there's no statute of limitation for fraud. So if the IRS thinks you're being fraudulent, they'll go back. So let's talk about the CSV and compile method. Even if you're at step one, we want you to back up your bank statements because when you switch banks or you try and go back in time and get this information, the IRS occasionally does these awful audits where they ask for freaking everything. And that is like the, the bad lottery, the negative lottery, the, the one you don't want to get picked for. And it can happen. At the end of the day, back that stuff up. Now, taking that to a little bit more sophisticated level is using Excel to download not Excel for downloading, but download into CSV or into Excel the stuff from your bank. Then you're probably on the onset combining personal expenses and otherwise, and you can just download that. You'll have the date, transaction, etc. But paying someone to wonder what's Costco, what's Amazon is not so effective. So what you can do is go in and just tag that in Excel. I tag that for office expenses, all the things on the profit and loss template I'm happy to share or get it at know your numbers, accountingplay.com slash KYN. So all you got to do is come up with those categories or the anti-categories, no dry cleaning, no commute, only things outside of the commute when you're traveling outside your home office, things like that. And you're tagging that in Excel and then either a qualified person or a sort and filter or you know someone who has some basic uh, excel knowledge can help categorize that into expenses and then you have your income categories your expense categories from there you can have a conversation with a professional say hey did you miss anything did you miss business miles did you miss home office did you use any cash out of pocket that's not in those books did someone else pay for something and you paid them back in a different way so even if you have all the straight data, there's lots of things that are not in there, including revenue. Did you take in cash? Did you take in trade? That's all of a part of a revenue as well. So that is a CSV and compile methodology. It's really good to have that data during the year. That's how we used to do it a lot. You can get fancy, you can use a pivot table, anything once you grab all of that information in an Excel file, anyone who has a little bit of experience in that area, can snap together a profit and loss for you, and then a qualified person can bolt on or add on the other expenses from there. Getting into number four. QuickBooks Online, online accounting software in general. Doesn't have to be QuickBooks. Now, QuickBooks Online or the other software, sometimes they only go back so far in the bank feed, meaning the information they take in. So, if you actually have some budget for this, it's not a, a one-shot business, something that's gonna go away. Even if you're not dead set on QuickBooks or you don't love the idea of getting the software, I say, hey, look, let's do the CSV and compile method, but in a nice, visual, fun way. So you can take all those CSVs, load them up to QuickBooks through their bank feeds, or you can connect the bank feeds, see how far back they go, and they might go back 90 days, maybe more, and then fill in the difference. From there, you have just a giant amalgamation of rather uh, business transactions and junk transactions, everything. So someone can come in, boom, 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 start accepting transactions, and the machine will kind of learn. Say, hey, Uber, maybe that's business travel, maybe that's 100% not business travel, and then the software will start making suggestions for you. You can even auto-suggest. So that is a great way to 
snap together a mass amount of transaction volume. And now you're saying, okay, you can sort and filter by date, amount, big amounts in and out, it could be revenue or it could be money contributed to the business. And you can figure out what those things are in a lot more visual and easy way, especially when you can kind of bulk categorize using the software. Can't emphasize enough, you know, get an hour on the calendar for someone who knows what they're doing, can snap that together. And if that's all you got, fine. I just did this recently with MailChimp. I finally said, hey, why don't I have an expert help me with this? And that was so silly, so dumb, that I thought I was capable enough to manage something as simple as MailChimp. It's silly. Uh, people's jobs are to do this one thing, get some, get some service in there, even if it's an hour to get you in the right direction. Number four, the full service. This is the, uh, the old school way of uh, trying to make everything perfect after the fact. And I have seen this as a downfall of many sort of CPA type engagements where someone comes and they say, hey, I'm a new business. I started QuickBooks. I did a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And they, you want to perfect it after the fact. That can be done, but it's the same as a monthly bookkeeping service which say accountingplay.com slash services might offer for $125 a month, but even more. So $125 a month when things are going well, and if you're going after the fact, hey, look, figure $200 a month. So all of a sudden you have a $2,400 accounting bill. You only made ten grand. It's not worth it. So be careful with the full service. What I like to do is try and snap it together with in-person meetings using uh, methodologies CSV and compile or the QuickBooks online compile and then get the tax return get that data into maybe even a fresh QuickBooks file and then keep life moving and relevant going forward by not being concerned about the 99 cent transaction that's gonna hold up a tax return life is short number five pulling it all together so ultimately, when we have these scenarios as a CPA or you know professional services, we have to kind of have a nice balance between what that person can afford and how we're going to do things. And it's the same thing as far as how much time an entrepreneur wants to spend. Now, I have a client that has made north of six figures by himself and puts this together in Excel. I don't know if it's a cathartic process and I help him through it. That's a little extreme. For most of us out there, we're growing our business, getting to that first 125000 and then hiring and scaling from there. So you're going to have to find a balance between backing up all your own stuff. you got to get the bank statements, get the stuff into CSV, do your best to have a conceptual idea of how much you made, save your receipts, file the return, life goes on, and get it right on going. Don't manually enter things. You don't need to be manually entering things into accounting software. That can be accomplished via a journal entry. So what I have my clients say, what is your grand total office expense? And they might have a little note here and an Excel there and an Evernote over there. As long as we know that total and all of the totals, we can use a journal entry to get that into QuickBooks if they want to use QuickBooks ongoing in the future. I like seeing my transactions over and over and over, day to day, because I know, oh my gosh, that internet's 100 bucks times 12. That's $1,200 a year, et cetera, et cetera. You see what's going on through your books. I just got a nasty charge for server hosting, and I fought back, and they were, I didn't even fight. I just asked what's going on here, and so we, we looked into it, and there's an error on the site. So it's good to see those transactions come through in real time, because you try and fight a charge nine months from now, good luck's not going to be fun. Ultimately, you're picking out your expenses, you're categorizing what is an expense, what is revenue. That is the core of your profit and loss. From there comes your balance sheet, the money you have, and also helps reconcile to how much money you have accumulated and made in the business, and if your profit and loss figures are correct. So that's the ultimate level. Hopefully, this has been illuminating and alleviating as you snap together your books. If you don't have the data, no accountant can help you. But if you get together 
and call your bank. Sometimes it's going to take some weeks to get that CSV uh, if it's too far in the past, or you're going to have to pay $50 for them to dig that up and dig up those statements. That's fine. Even if you find some outsourced person to go through and categorize that stuff for you, it is more than worth it. If you're late in the game, file an extension and pay in as much tax as you can. Make that motivation for savings account. Apply those any refunds to the future or get your taxes done and take that refund back as soon as possible. May this have been a amazing accountingplay.com moment featuring Know Your Numbers, our master's course where we talk about all of this stuff and how to do sloppy accounting because that's real. Appreciate it. Have a nice day. You have been listening to Accounting Play and Know Your Numbers. Check us out at accountingplay.com. And if you need a CPA, check us out at gillinghamcpa.com. Until next time.